Yeah, this is Bob McElvain, your host this morning to a Water and Wastewater IO, IIOT and Remote O&M seminar. And please ask questions as uh, you wish. Uh, we're going to spend some time on the overview, then on municipal drinking water, then on municipal wastewater. And we have a very interesting particular example in a country that's already primed to take maximum advantage of this, which is Chile. And so let's move on to the overview here. Uh, before we do get too far, uh, these are the people that are signed up this, mor uh, this morning. So you have a nice mix of, of people who are providing the, the software, the uh, analytics, and the people who are providing the equipment. And we believe that the industrial internet of things is going to be enhanced by the industrial internet of wisdom. And the industrial internet of wisdom involves, you know, the pump companies like Pulse Feeder and the Seco's uh, such as divisions such as Dual and the uh, uh, Eaton who has and a number of the other companies like Eaton GE and so forth are on both the equipment end where they can provide the wisdom as well as on the IIoT uh, side of things. So on the overview we're talking about uh, flow and treatment markets for the uh, water and wastewater municipalities of $100 billion a year. And of that $100 billion, the, uh, by, by 2026, the traditional route to market is going to be $69 billion. But part of the uh, sales will now be going to digital process management entities or specifiers. In other words, the, the decisions about the hardware and software are, are going to go on a different route than they have before. And then there will be revenues that are generated just because you've got smart instruments, pumps, and, uh, and of course, the IIoT uh, software itself. And that's going to be another $15 billion. So our first crack at the forecast would be that this is going to add 13, uh, 31 billion dollars. Uh, it's going to be a 31 billion dollar opportunity. Part of it, about half of it, would be an opportunity you're going to miss if you're not in IIoT, and half of it is a new opportunity. And that pretty well divides down the middle between water and wastewater, with uh, wastewater being slightly bigger than the, than the water side of things. And the reason we think that is because of the uh, IIOW portion of it. In other words, the water is going to be more straightforward, but the um, wastewater is much more complex, and there's much more of an IIOW portion of it there, as we'll see as we move along here. So a number of companies are jockeying for a position in this industry, and uh, Suez uh, in Chile is uh, an amazing example, and we'll get into that at the whole end of the uh, session here. But uh, if that's not enough, they also are buying GE Water. So it's a very interesting company to be analyzing. And then you've got people like Xylem who uh, – uh, made a you know b a more than a billion dollar purchase of a smart meter uh, firm, and but some of these segments are already very significant. The uh, a smart uh, water metering is a is a couple billion dollar worldwide business already, and there are here lots and lots of opportunities. We we have done a lot in the aeration work for biological treatment, and we'll 
hopefully get us a few minutes to talk about uh, about that. Obviously, the water treatment companies have a big opportunity selling the chemicals, and Nalco already has a 24-7 uh, monitoring operation uh, and is certainly a leader in that regard. So let's get into water treatment. The uh, uh, flow and treat uh, market is going to be uh, substantial with the NAFTA market being a 12 billion by 2030, up from uh, a couple of billion uh, now. And East Asia would be 30 billion up from about 5 billion now. So there's a pretty good growth opportunities uh, here. We also uh, believe that all this has to be backed up with as much detailed statistics right down to the state level in the US, the pro province level. China. And so we have a lot of those kind of numbers. And so here, for instance, is uh, municipal water equipment markets as a percentage of uh, 2014 uh, world. And so the U.S. would be, by 2019, we'll have six, we'll be, the market will be 6.7 percent of the world market as of 2014. And the, uh, and Brazil will even be uh, bigger, which is uh, interesting uh, development there uh, in terms of new equipment. Uh, obviously not in terms of total connected systems or uh, support and service and so forth there. But with um, over 50,000 water utilities in the U.S., IoT is going to be a big market. And the other thing that we are uh, preaching is that the way to start for all the companies is to organize the IIOW and IOT around the large users. And there's uh, 300 larger uh, utilities in the United States with 30,000 connections. Uh, and um, so this is really a good uh, starting point. And of course, there's the, the metering alone with uh, you know uh, theft and all sorts of different things is a big uh, big opportunity. So that um, and, and of course it, it goes beyond just the metering. It goes to companies as like we're talking about here that uh, you can integrate hydraulic modeling and and water quality data into the uh, the mix. And you have uh, some uh, samples of the companies that are offer, offering the uh, the uh, IOT solutions that track operations, monitor energy consumption, do audits, monitor, monitor water uh, water quality, and then operate the equipment remotely. Uh, Lindy is an example of a company that's in the uh, provides the gases, but also provides the gas detection. So they're, uh, they have a reliable monitoring of all the common hazards in the water treatment uh, plants. And then, uh, but more importantly, the, uh, they supply the gases that are also utilized. So what they can do with remotely monitoring the use is also to take over the uh, sourcing of all the gases and the supply. Since they're monitoring the inventory, they can provide uh, new uh, gases as required. So this is a, a big opportunity, I think, for the, the chemical companies all the way around. Uh, most of your water treatment chemical companies are really service companies anyway, uh, in that they're buying basic chemical chemicals and mixing them or just delivering them to the site. So uh, what is now done on site by service engineers for a lot of the water treatment companies is going to be done remotely in the future. By the way, any questions so far, anybody? The uh, 
there, there, there are a number of good examples where this all is being uh, uh, um, implemented. And you know, here's a city that's got ultrasound sensors uh, and has uh, a successful uh, system. But what's interesting is that they are going a step further and they can even monitor the household usage as to how much is being uh, consumed by the showers in the washing machines and so forth. And uh, it certainly is an interesting opportunity even in this whole gray water area where uh, the water for some of the things like the showers and the washing machines could be separated from the sewage uh, and uh, delivered uh, as what they call gray water for uh, other uses or, or less treatment, uh, et cetera, uh, than the sewage. So the, uh, to the extent to which that's already being done in the in the non I, in the non-industrial area, for instance, with automobiles, they've gotten to the point where you're you're going to be remotely monitoring all the traffic uh, from a, a a cloud system that can measure the distance between automobiles, and once it's controlling all the automobiles, uh, it can optimize the traffic flow. But you know things like the shower here. It also will be receiving data on when the windshield wipers are operating in each car and can, and can predict exactly what traffic needs to slow down because the 10 cars in front of it all of a sudden have their windshield wipers on. So it certainly is a whole different world. Again, the water treatment companies, uh, Carita is remotely monitoring uh, water treatment systems and they're a large Japanese-based supplier of treatment chemicals. So the opportunity is not only to source the uh, chemicals in the most optimum manner, but it is to use all this data to provide a better selection of chemicals. And then beyond that, all this data will show where there could be improvements, and then for Carita and its competitors to use this data to come up with better chemicals and solutions to problems that uh, are much more obvious when you're generating all the sensor-based data on a continuous basis. So, on, on, so another one of our concepts here is you're having the equivalent of millions of white papers accurately um, created on a continuing basis and taking those white papers and doing something meaningful and innovating is, I think, the key to what we say empowering IOT with IIOW. So the smart uh, meter market uh, is certainly uh, moving from just metering to the whole advanced metering infrastructure. And as uh, we, uh, uh, and then there are people like Sensophone and so forth that can uh, monitor up to 12 conditions at the uh, remote pump stations. And the uh, AMI is actually coming down in cost. So it's really not much more than just your um, conventional um, AMR. So this is a, uh, I, I think, um, part of the whole picture is the cost of the sensors and all this is coming down rapidly enough to generate big markets. The uh, Xylem has moved into this in a big way with buying of, of census and they have leak detection capabilities and all sorts of things that uh, are, are, are benefiting fitting the operators of these uh, plants. And but they've taken it a step further. They've purchased an analytics firm, and so they uh, can a analyze the uh, water system and provide predictive simulations of possible pipe breakages to help the utility plan asset maintenance and repair. And then this data can also be used by the people that make the pipes that then 
uh, in terms of okay, let's uh, how, how do we make better pipes so these uh, breakages don't occur as as often? <clears throat> Eaton uh, has uh, a, a very good position with all the different things they're into. And so they have the secure remote monitoring and control solutions. And the, uh, it's especially suited to a wide variety of monitoring and control needs, not only in, in water, but in industrial, in, in municipal wastewater and industrial construction, <laughs> other uh, utility uh, factors. So they have a system that makes it uh, simpler to connect uh, and monitor and control a variety of mission critical field devices and assets, including the, the sensors, the meters, the pumps, and controls. And the other interesting thing about Eaton is they own a uh, uh, the largest backwashing filter uh, operation in the uh, in the world that designs these uh, centrifugal uh, filters that uh, are particularly suited to a lot of uh, of water, wastewater actually, rather than water applications to uh, do the first cut of taking out the, the solids. So the companies like Eaton and many others that have equipment divisions as well as the uh, software and, and instrumentation are going to be able to uh, lead the way in developing the IIOW aspects to go along with IIOT. And the, uh, you know, the, 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 it's interesting, for instance, that here you've got a, uh, a battery operated node supplier that positions these only a few hundred meters apart. So if one route doesn't work, another one and you can, does work and you can get to the gateway uh, with uh, this proximity of the uh, nodes here. Now let's go into uh, wastewater. The markets uh, are certainly uh, going to be robust there with the NAFTA market being a $21 billion uh, market by 2030 compared to $18 billion in, in West Europe and 27 in uh, East Asia. We track, uh, for every country of the world, we track the millions of gallons per day of primary, secondary uh, wastewater, as well as uh, pumping. Uh, you know how much how much wastewater is pumped, and unfortunately, in some comp in some countries, there isn't any primary or secondary, and the wastewater is pumped directly into waterways. Uh, we also divide that all up by rural versus uh, urban. And uh, so it's, it's interesting, for instance, in Asia, over just the next few years, you're going to have a 50,000 MGD, you know, increase in uh, wastewater uh, treatment. And that's uh, the uh, uh, very substantial portion of, uh, of the treatment, for instance, in the United States now, so just that 50,000 increase. But whereas in Europe, you're only going to have a, a modest, uh, modest increase. So Asia is certainly the place where a lot of this is going to uh, happen. Wastewater is a big opportunity for IIoT. Um, the, the chemical complexity of the water systems, as well as the geographic scale of wastewater systems, you know, all the territory that it covers, They've proven to be a significant barrier to improve process control. While some amount of operator presence is always going to be required at large wastewater facilities, a 24-7 physical presence is a safety, health, and quality risk. Uh, staff accounts for about 30% of the operational uh, costs of the plant. And of course, then the other big issue is the re remote monitoring of stormwater where you have fixed capacity systems and you have this big variation in in storm stormwater generation so the uh, there, there are lots of opportunities to use the uh, industrial internet of things 
to address this, these, these uh, stormwater uh, surges. Getting to actually doing the analytics, uh, IBM, for instance, has uh, made a demonstration at and uh, with uh, Aqua Aqualia, well, Aqua Aqualia, Aqualia, uh, who is the third largest private water management company uh, in the Spanish area, and it uh, uh, it has in, in, installed a. Uh, a system there that uh, results in a 13 and a half percent reduction in the plant's electricity consumption and the plant also uses its resource more effectively with a 14 percent reduction in the amount of chemicals needed to remove the phosphorus from the water and a 17 percent reduction in sludge product in, in in sludge production this is by getting uh, dewatered sludge that's a higher in a solids uh, content uh, obviously it doesn't change the amount of solids that's generated but it improves total nit nitrogen removal and uh, it controls the, the, the effluent parameters uh, with in, in the satisfaction with the regulations but the point here is that without the IIOW this simply better uses the chemicals and equipment which is there but all this sensor data that's coming in is going to allow chemical manufacturers to search for better chemicals that would even make bigger reductions and for equipment manufacturers that can uh, re reduce the plant's electricity consumption and I think we'll show you in a minute how uh, uh, we've been involved some in some in some projects like that the variables are, you know, certainly things like the uh, variable water uh, coming in to be treated, and uh, and this is obviously needs uh, a uh, sophisticated uh, uh, analytics. And, a, and in cold weather, the bacteria needed to break down the wastewater uh, accelerates. Uh, so there's a, a number of these uh, systems, uh, such as, uh, as being offered by FreeWave here for monitoring the pumps and the SCADA and so forth there. And then uh, there's a B&B uh, &B SmartWorks as their uh, software system uh, that's taking all this data from the wastewater plant and uh, analyzing it and then providing all the alerts. Here's a here's an example uh, that we won't get into the details at a uh, Stanford uh, wastewater treatment plant. And but the the bottom line is that they are monitoring all this data at all these different uh, locations in the plant. And uh, the um, the success of the system, though, uh, is actually an integration of the companies. So uh, the Arcadis was chosen as the design consultant. And here we have a question, what, what are the roles that are going to be played by all these large uh, consultants to the uh, wastewater treatment plants? It would seem to me there's a huge opportunity for them to be involved in this uh, marriage between the IIOT and the IIOW but it will be uh, imperative that the uh, that these consultants be more focused on the IIOW and uh, uh, understand what the innovative opportunities may be for better uh, ways to do these things so the uh, the local area uh, network supp supplier was uh, Arrowhive. And then uh, you've got Emerson, who's involved in a wide range of IIoT uh, activities right down to the Rosemont uh, sensors. So, uh, and for instance, five transmitters were installed at the primary odor control system. And the odor control is something that uh, 
a wastewater treatment plant operators will tell you they have more complaints about odor control than any anything in uh, operating a, a wastewater treatment plant. And these are very uh, difficult uh, uh, problems to uh, overcome because it only takes a uh, one or two parts per billion of some of these odors to create noticeable uh, uh, odors, uh, you know, many, miles away. So the sense, sensing and control of the chemicals that prevent the odors from even occurring is uh, certainly the other one way to look at it. And the other way, too, is you can, with the odor control systems, you can have variable <laughs> airflow according to the uh, odor levels. So rather than just run clean air through a, a scrubbing system uh, where you're not really doing anything in times when there aren't any odors in the area uh, to uh, reduce the flow through those uh, hoods. And uh, so there's all sorts of different ways that we you can bring down the cost of operating these plants and improve the odor capture. <clears throat> the uh, uh, so whether you have somebody like uh, ACOM or Arcadis, uh, Bechtel or whatever doing these uh, management of these projects, you also have specialists like DTSI that provide the uh, IT application uh, development. And Xylem has moved forward uh, with the purchase of these different companies and they do have uh, cloud-based uh, SCADA systems uh, for the monitoring and control solution for pump stations and, and network applications. But they've also uh, developed new equipment, and I think this is what uh, we've been saying throughout the morning here, which is the opportunity is to take advantage of IIoT add the IIOW, and in the case of of the flight concert, concertor, it's got integrated intelligence but, intelligence, but more importantly, it also has flexible performance. And so, in contrast to the fixed performance curves of conventional pumps, this pump offers a wide performance field from which to choose the right operating point. And this makes selection uh, extremely simple. And we're going to use a, a, an example in a minute on, uh, on compressors, uh, where you need a, multiple compressors to do what uh, flight says they're doing you know, in one pump design now. And the energy in a uh, wastewater treatment plant is a considerable portion of, of the cost, by the way. So Asylum has uh, uh, positioned itself to provide uh, a lot of this IIoT, and they certainly have the IIOW. The, the, the company uh, has uh, treat, transport, and test as their three divisions. So that's a nice marriage of a lot of the skills and, and hardware that you need to succeed. The uh, dissolved oxygen uh, monitoring is critical to minimizing the uh, amount of uh, energy that you use because uh, aeration equipment is a good portion of the total energy consumed, 30 to 60 percent, in, in fact, of a typical wastewater facility. So just getting the right amount of oxygen in there is uh, important. Uh, it's essential to keep improving the sensors themselves. You're going to do no better with your system than the sensors. And if you've got a membrane uh, DO sensor that is uh, malfunctioning a good portion of the time, you've got a problem. But um, Emerson has a, a bare electrode design that's got a rotating diamond grindstone that continuously polishes the electrode surfaces. So you not only have lots of maintenance savings, but you have much more reliable uh, sensing 
on a uh, continuous basis. So Pent Air is, uh, is also involved. Uh, they're a pump manufacturer with a number of pump divisions, and they've got cloud-based wireless uh, systems uh, with two-way communication between the operator and the product. And they started with the uh, home sump pump uh, market, but they certainly have the capability for the others as well. The alarm systems that are an integral part of IIoT, uh, as we learned a little earlier, can greatly reduce the number of people in a uh, wastewater treatment plant. And we uh, delved into the Iowa City uh, plant and uh, <laughs> the activities there and found out that they're able actually to eliminate the night operator uh, with the proper alarming system. But what I would say there is that the next level for the Win 911s and the others is to construct these systems so they are more uh, sophisticated and the, the owners as well as the suppliers are thinking in terms of not only alerting the uh, first level of decision makers should there be a problem, but are also connecting the suppliers of the aerators, the sludge presses, the clarifiers, and all these other pieces of equipment in the plant because obviously, like they're saying here, the, the night operator was unproductive and bored and the op overnight position was difficult to keep staffed. And if a dr dramatic event occurred at either facility, the night shift operator would likely be unable to handle it himself. So the alerting the superintendent, maintenance uh, engineer, whatever is the first level, but if it's a clarifier type thickening problem, as we'll see here in a minute, a with your cloud-based systems, you can also alert the clarifier supplier or expert, and he is going to be much better able to solve the problem than even would be the local people, particularly in a small, small plant. So I know we have um, uh, uh, Ron Ashkar on the on the phone with us now, and I would say. Uh, Ron, that uh, you know, think, thinking through how to bring in a priority level. In other words, if it's going to be the clear, if it's a clarifier thick, thickener problem, maybe the clarifier uh, supplier should be alerted at the same time the superintendent is. So it's, uh, it's, it's and once you get into the pumps, uh, which is another important thing, and <clears throat> the compressors, uh, it is often going to be the case that an early alert to the compressor supplier uh, may be as important as just getting it to the the superintendent. Uh, anybody have any comments at, at this point before we move on here? Uh, we are putting up uh, uh, these uh, e webinars. We've done thousands of, uh, of hours of uh, webinars and what we call interweb views. But we do believe in our web views are the future, and we would would recommend that companies who are spending very little of their time on recorded presentations, for instance, you might you you're probably when you think of all the money that gets spent where your salesmen are making up powerpoints and then presenting them to one client and never recording them the cost of recording them and making them available in YouTube and et cetera is nothing. So, um, and this I think is the wave of the future and part of this whole digital process management is the availability of things just like we did with Ron here a couple days ago. And uh, that uh, there's the, the recording on our website, there are the PowerPoints, and it's also uh, was just posted to YouTube. The 
clarifier tank performance that we were just talking about is uh, something that becomes uh, important. And you've got uh, technologies now, data analytic technologies like clarifying, which will predict when the sludge will overflow and be released. So this is the kind of uh, problem that uh, uh, you know can be resolved with analytics, but also you need the clarifier supplier in there to say, okay, why is this happening? It's it's one thing to have a system that predicts when it's going to happen, but it's another thing to get a, a system to make it less likely to happen. And so that's where we we say the IIOW comes into play. And you've got a lot of the big companies providing a lot of the software that is uh, needed here and the hardware. And uh, so Motorola realizes how big a, a market this is and is very active in it and has the the uh, remote, remote terminal units and modems and everything all the way through the uh, control centers in the area. So they're one of the number of partners that are available for the suppliers. And uh, again, I think this just repeats a few of the things we were just uh, saying here and uh, their two-way communications and so forth. And uh, we talked about this uh, Aqualia uh, operation uh, earlier, so I won't go through that again. But again, it is the desirability of uh, of having the data analytics, but also adding the IIOW to that. Uh, here's another uh, SCADA provider, uh, software provider in this whole area. Uh, we talked about the Lindy uh, monitoring, but Sierra Monitor uh, is particularly uh, focused on the wastewater plants, and they have the methane emissions. Uh, hydrogen sulfide is the big one for our uh, odor control. Hydrogen sulfide has a huge odor potential, particularly when you, it re reacts with a number of the organics and things. And uh, so they they not only have the uh, sensors, but they have uh, and and, it, and it, this is where they uh, recommend that they be utilized. You can see in a wastewater plant, you've got starting all the way from the pumping stations, you know, all the lift stations and so forth. That's a big uh, odor control problem, a lot of those lift stations are, are in, in areas uh, where there are a lot of people uh, around. And obviously sludge incineration, uh, right, incineration and the digesters and uh, all these other areas where you have to have um, uh, combustible gas monitoring. But then marrying that uh, uh, with the uh, systems, and so Sierra has their Sentry IT fire and gas text detection solution, so which integrates the uh, sensor modules. And this would be kind of the edge type computer that then goes to the larger cloud-based systems that your uh, software providers are uh, offering. We're talking here, here of the couple of the compressor suppliers that uh, uh, provide the aeration blowers. And they also have the remote monitoring. So as we were, were talking about here a few minutes ago, when that Iowa utility has a uh, aeration blower problem, the superintendent should be um, notified, but probably the blower supplier should be notified as well. And uh, um, so he can be prepared if there's an emergency uh, situation even though it may only be then triggered by the superintendent saying, yeah, we need somebody out here or we just need your consulting on the phone. But it may be that the, uh, if he is, if, if the, if Gardner Denver is already monitoring that uh, system through a cloud, then the uh, alarm from uh, Ronald's company there from Wynn may be redundant because the Gardner Denver service people could say, yeah, we've already, we've got a problem there. We've got vibration. We've got uh, all these different things that are happening in this particular 
uh, compressor. So over time, you're going to have this uh, multiple analysis of all these operations because through the cloud, all, all these suppliers should be uh, able to uh, monitor their equipment. But let's take this now uh, to the next level, which is minimizing the electricity consumption. And we have been working with some of the compressor uh, companies on some of the technologies for wastewater aeration. And note that in uh, some plants, uh, they have a combination of blowers rather than one type of blower. So the if you have a fixed volume requirement, one type of blower gives you the highest uh, energy efficiency. But when the requirement either expands or contracts, you then you're off the curve, and this is not a very efficient way then to aerate. Uh, you can take, there are other blowers that lend themselves to variable speed drives much more cost effectively. So by combining the two types of blowers in one installation, you can use the fixed volume blower continuously because it's higher efficiency with that fixed volume. And then the other blower with a variable speed drive can deliver the rest of the uh, requirement. And this is one of the examples of, of an innovative approach that reduces energy consumption uh, even farther. Now let's get into uh, uh, Chile, and what we're, we're saying on the IIW side is finding out everything there is to know about all these wastewater plants is a very important aspect of providing all the sensing and software and manipulation of those plants. And we, I think, can demonstrate that how that's easy that's going to be in Chile because Chile has an ideal structure. Uh, the wastewater, for instance, is reused, and therefore the water and wastewater operations are conducted as one. A limit, very limited number of financial entities do all the decision making. Uh, Suez is a big player and not only operates the plants locally, but has a European monitoring center uh, to provide the support. And most of the decision makers are LinkedIn members and uh, can be easily organized for webinars and other digital interaction. So this kind of just gets into some of the background and how this all happened in Chile. The, um, the, the bottom line though is Suez is the dominant player in Chile with 40% of all the wastewater treatment, but it also uh, is responding to the environmental challenges with digital technology, uh, and so it has a, a monitoring center in uh, northern France, and it's remotely meter reading and smart water infrastructure analyzing uh, facilities in France and overseas, and these include intelligent management solutions for sanitation as well as water facilities. So it continuously monitors the infrastructures and uh, guarantees all the performance uh, of all the infrastructures and provides reliable and up-to-date information for local authorities as well. But this is such a, a good opportunity uh, to take this to the, the level because uh, it, it's amazing here that Suez owns or operates 40%, as you can see here in this chart here, in the blue, they operate 40% of the wastewater facilities in the uh, in Chile, in the Ontario Teachers Union, a bunch of teachers in Ontario that were dedicated to clean environments own another 40% of the wastewater facilities. So between those two entities here, you have over 80% of all the wastewater in Chile. And part of what we're trying to do worldwide is identify, you know, all these different individual plants and what they what they have. And uh, so 
this is a plant that's um, controlled, operated by Suez, and with that remote control center in France, can make blower decisions and all the other things that we're talking about with a connection of the companies and uh, the uh, these are some of the, the plants and the people and so forth here and the types of people that are um, at these plants but a lot of this in terms of getting people who are knowledgeable Suez owns Degramont now of course they bought GE water now too but they own Degramont and so uh, they're they're Fair, uh, ferrying people back and forth between operational tasks. So this guy, Ferran, is the maintenance uh, engineer at the plant, but he was originally with Degramal, so he would who put in some of the equipment probably. And the same thing with the commissioning manager of Degramal is now, you know, at, at the plant as well. He commissioned the plant, now he's running it. So, uh, you know, these are some of the things that. Uh, uh, are, are showing up as we we do the uh, analysis of the people at these plants. And here's one of the others. And here is um, the, the types of things you have to get into is is you know where they have gravity thickeners and uh, and whether they're using anaerobic digestion and, and whether they're using the uh, one and a half meter band filter, which is a belt filter press here, or whether they're using centrifuges or or plate frame filter presses that would give you a much drier sludge. And then, of course, the deodorization is being done by uh, activated carbon at that particular plant. But uh, we have uh, a database with, uh, uh, for instance, the United States, with, with every one of the uh, 4,000 largest, well, over one M MGD plants with all the very detailed levels of information and then brief information on the other uh, 12,000 that are that are small little plants that only have about 15% of the total uh, um, treatment. The uh, LinkedIn again is a way to a uh, unique way uh, to bring all these people together, and we've actually started started up uh, some uh, LinkedIn discussion groups. And I know I personally, uh, you know, added several thousand people in this IIoT space to, to my LinkedIn contacts over just the last few months. So that is the, the end of, uh, of the presentation here. I would uh, welcome any uh, questions anybody has. If not, uh, some of you are uh, subscribers, and and these PowerPoints are will be posted in the system here in the next day or two, along with the recording. And we are going to make the recording uh, temporarily available to the broader audience, so that'll pop up uh, as well, and we'll send you a link to that. So uh, I'd like to thank you for spending the time today, and we'll look forward to having you with us. Uh, uh, next week is air pollution control, and then we're getting into every week into another IIoT area. So again, thanks, and this is Bob McElvain signing off.